CCTV News at 6 with Hudson Mack. Good evening. Hudson Mack is away tonight. I'm Andrew Johnson. The parents of a three-year-old Victoria girl diagnosed with a rare form of cancer say they'll file a formal complaint with the Vancouver Island Health Authority. They say their little girl was extremely ill, vomiting and unable to eat for weeks. But a string of doctors sent them away, including doctors at Victoria General Hospital's ER. CTV's Stephen Andrew joins us now with the latest. Stephen? Andrew, not only is the family of the little girl looking for a review, the NDP's health critic says the province should step into the case. Ten, go. This toddler has a rare cancer. And for three-year-old Hannah, oh, now being treated at BC Children's Hospital, getting a diagnosis has been difficult. A lot of kids present to, to their doctors with a variety of aches and complaints, and most of those kids don't have cancer. And so um, often it, it can be a challenge to diagnose kids with cancer. It certainly wouldn't be the first thing that you would think of in someone who has an abdominal mass uh, that's, or just swelling of the abdomen. But is it, it is something you is on the differential that we look for. And, and often with the, they do take a bit of time to diagnose. Um, but um, as, the, as these tumors get bigger, often that's when they come to light uh, and come to attention is because of the fact that uh, they become large. Hannah's mother is angry it took so long to get her daughter into treatment. It was the fact that the hospitals and everyone was telling us that there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong, and we could tell that our daughter was getting worse and worse. Brooke Urban says Hannah started showing signs of being ill in mid-June. She was vomiting and unable to eat. The family visited a number of walking clinics in the following weeks, but each time they were given a different explanation for what was wrong. It turns out none were correct. On June 26, Brooke took Hannah to the emergency department at Victoria General Hospital. Three hours later, she was released with instructions to follow up with her family doctor. Um, they did all the assessments on her and came back that she was a completely healthy child and that it was her posture. <laughs> When Hannah's symptoms got worse, her family doctor told Brooke to rush her daughter back to emergency at VGH and suggested an emergency ultrasound. Um, Victoria General Hospital did not do the immediate ultrasound, um, booked us in for the day. A treatment timeline the health authority released to CTV News shows Hannah arrived at Victoria General on August the 3rd at 3 p.m. She was immediately triaged as critical. 15 minutes later, she was seen by a doctor. Two and a half hours later, she had an x-ray. And more than eight hours later, doctors ordered an ultrasound. Sound. A few hours after that, at 1.30 in the morning, she was admitted to the pediatric ward. It wasn't until 9.30 that morning, the day after she arrived in the ER, that Hannah received an ultrasound. Five hours later, the family learned she has a mass in her stomach. And nearly 10 hours later, she is rushed to BC Children's Hospital. The NDP's health critic is calling on the health authority to complete a full review of the case. I think the ministry uh, should make it clear that uh, they would like to see a review take place, that the family get uh, answers to, to what happened. Because I think that's one of the common complaints I certainly hear from uh, people or common concerns is they want to know that there's accountability within the system. But the health authority says it cannot act unless it receives a complaint from the family. In order for our patient care quality office to initiate any review into the care um, of this, this child, uh, we would need to have full consent from the family. Hannah's family says that complaint is coming. But their first priority is Hannah and supporting her during what is expected to be a year of chemotherapy. No parent should have to go through something like this. This is traumatizing, it is upsetting. Bihar says it is required by law to respond, and that could include a meeting with doctors and the family to address concerns. Now, Andrew, Hannah's diagnosis is just the latest in a series of tragedies for her family. In January of last year, the family lost its business when fire gutted the operation. That same year, Hannah's grandfather died from a heart attack in October. And now the family is struggling to make ends meet and keep a home in Victoria and stay with Hannah at the hospital. Meantime, though, friends of the family are helping uh, the family by stepping up to raise money. We knew that, obviously, because Rob, well, they're all from the island, so, and Rob was going to be planning on going back and forth to work and everything, but he wants to be here. I can't blame him to be with Hannah, and so we just wanted to do whatever we could to help and, and use our skills. It's amazing to see how much support there really is out there, and we've heard lots of stories from other people who have, who've had children with cancer, and just lots of support, lots of stories, lots of love and prayers. 
Now, doctors say that Hannah is responding well to chemotherapy. They're going to evaluate her progress in six weeks' time, but there is that financial strain, Andrew. Her father now has to make trips to and from Victoria to Vancouver, and that has supporters looking to raise even more money to support the family. And if you want to find out more details on uh, the fundraising efforts, you can log on to the Facebook page, Help Get Little, little Hannah Cancer-Free, Andrew. And it looks like a lot of people are doing just that. They certainly are. Uh, I've read many of the comments online, and this has touched the hearts of many people on Vancouver Island. It has. Thanks, Stephen. You're welcome.